what's good y'all it's boy ross back at again with another video so i'm gonna check out the meteoric rise of Liv morgan now just off the top of alone i know some people be like oh why would you check out this video you don't like Liv morgan you always hate on Liv morgan no 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 guys let's not do this it's not that i'm always hating on Liv morgan but at the end of the day you gotta call a spade a spade Let's be honest here. It's hard to buy in to Liv Morgan as a credible threat in situations, a lot of situations, only because she doesn't come off as someone that, in my personal opinion, and especially in certain things that I have seen and the way that she's been booked, she doesn't come off as somebody that you should be, I guess, worried about in the ring. I'm, I know she loves WWE, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we also know why she's there. She, is she's the, really the best in the ring? She's okay at best, but once again, it's still kind of hard for me personally to buy in to Liv Morgan. Oh, Liv Morgan, she can, she can definitely kick somebody's ass. I can't buy into it as much as maybe like a Raquel. I can buy into her. I can buy in more to Oscar. Yeah, I can buy into a little bit more with Bailey. You know what I'm saying? But with her, not so much. Not to say she's awful. No, I don't think she's just the worst in the ring. But at the same time, it's just we know why she's there, man. She's a very attractive woman. WWE knows that. WWE knows, you know, the kids love her. The guys, you guys love her. The simps love her. So we understand why she's there and, you know, the position that she's at. But at the same time, come on, y'all. You got to look past that. Is Liv Morgan giving you some five-star matches? Not so much. She can have a decent match depending on the opponent. But you're not about to get no five-star classic out of her. That's just what it is. So... You can say I'm hating. I'm, this is just my personal opinion on it. I think she's cool. Probably a cool person. You know what I'm saying? Solid. Okay in the ring. But she's not someone I think instant women's champion. I just don't see that. But we're going to check this out. I have to put that caveat out there. Because I already know I'm going to get some hate for it. But whatever. Let's get into this. Liv Morgan is your new women's tag team champion and one of the top stars in WWE today. Five years ago though, she was just a member of a jobber faction. So what happened? Today we're going to be discussing the meteoric rise of Liv Morgan. Subscribe to the channel, you have until a three count. Hope you beat the count and let's get into the video. This should be an interesting one man. Gianna Daddio was signed to the WWE in October oh, of 2014, having been a longtime fan of professional wrestling. She signed a developmental deal and reported down to NXT and the Performance Center, and at first would make a couple appearances on TV only. And here's the thing. Like I said, she is a fan, so that's something I can credit her on. I would never take that she does love wrestling in WWE, you know, so that's not something, you know, there's some people that not fans and they just tried it just to try it. And WWE saw pretty faces and they're like, we're going to hire you. She did, you know, she loves the business. It's just she's not, you know, I just don't see no wrestler that's going to give me a five star match. Even a four star match is going to tear the house down. I'm not going to get like a match I got with Rhea and Charlotte from her at WrestleMania. That's what I'm saying as a plant in the audience or just playing extra roles. And she was wrestling on the NXT house show scene, originally using her real name of Gianna Daddio, but on the November 4th, 2015 episode of NXT, she would debut on TV in ring under the ring name of Marley, losing to Eva Marie, and she was only working as a jobber. She would then mm. continue again on the house show circuit under the name of Marley, but on her next appearance on NXT on the December 2nd episode, just less than a month later, she would take on her new ring name, another new ring name, once again of Liv Morgan once again Which works. losing to Emma and this was more or less the story of Liv Morgan for a couple of years in NXT you know just losing Liv Morgan for most of her time in NXT wasn't necessarily a jobber but she was more or less just a lower card wrestler on NXT she was in a good spot getting regular TV time and being on TV regularly but she was never involved in title programs or wrestling takeovers 
So it was surprising when on the November 21st, 2017 episode of SmackDown Live, Liv Morgan would make her main roster debut mm -hmm. alongside Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan, establishing themselves as the Riot Squad. Have a go all about Next it. week, Liv Morgan and the rest of the Riot Squad would make their main roster debut, actually defeating Charlotte Flair, Naomi, and Natalia. A big win to start things off for them. Then, next week, they beat Carmella, Natalia, and Tamina in a six-person tag match. And then, two weeks later, they beat Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Naomi in a six-person tag team match. The Riot Squad were on a roll, and it looked as though they were a threat to the SmackDown Live women's roster. But it went downhill, literally, mm, yeah. right from here. The yep. next week, Liv Morgan suffered her first loss on the main roster to Naomi in just three minutes. And then five days later, she was a part of the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. She lasted five minutes, scored zero eliminations, and got eliminated by Michelle McCool. The Riot Squad would pick up things again as Charlotte Flair would engage in the feud with them and Ruby Riot specifically. As Charlotte Flair would defeat Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, and then Ruby Riot for the title in consecutive matches. Damn. The Riot Squad would only get an occasional win when it was them teaming in a six person tag, but if it was any combination of them in a two on two tag match or a singles match, it was over for them. They were part of the WrestleMania 34 Women's Pre Show Battle Royal where. Once again, they didn't really do anything in it. I think they teased, like, Sarah Logan firing up and looking like she could win, but then she just didn't. They were drafted to Raw in the Superstar Shake-Up, and then from here, they were just cemented as jobbers, pretty yeah. much, for a long while. While they were on TV every week, they were usually losing, other than the occasional win. They were part of feuds, but they would never really wrestle on pay-per-views, apart from Ruby, who would get the occasional pay-per-view match, being the leader of the group. But Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan were more or less just jobbers and side pieces of the Riot Squad. They would actually get their first pay-per-view match in 2018 though on the Super Showdown show in 2018, that show that happened in Australia. It was a six-person tag Definitely didn't they watch lost that. to Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins. But they got another pay-per-view match that same month as they got to be a part of the Evolution pay-per-view. Once again, a six-person tag where they were losing, this time to Bailey, Natalia, and Sasha Banks. This was a really good match though. And from here, once again, Liv Morgan and the Riot Squad just continued in their stride as jobbers. They were all in the Royal Rumble 2019, which uh, Liv Morgan got eliminated from in about two seconds or something. Jeez. What was it again? It was eight seconds, not two. So Damn. a little longer, but it's still the shortest time spent in the Women's Rumble match, a record that Liv Morgan holds. The Riot Damn. Squad would be split up in that year's Superstar Shake Up when Liv Morgan was moved to SmackDown, whereas Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan remained on Raw, and this was a bit of a shock. However, it was also really exciting because Liv Morgan had improved a lot as a wrestler, and it was really exciting to see what she could possibly do as a singles wrestler now on the SmackDown brand. But um, she didn't really end up doing anything on SmackDown. <laughs> she was drafted to SmackDown in April 2019, but she wouldn't wrestle until the 16th of July 2019. And in fact, I think that was like her first appearance on SmackDown was three months later. She turned Damn. babyface when she confronted the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair. This was just a week after Kevin Owens had endorsed her in his work shoot promo saying she should be on TV more. She would lose to Charlotte in a two minute match by submission, but it was an all out two minute match and Liv Morgan actually looked pretty good in that two minutes somehow, but <laughs> then she would not appear for SmackDown or on the SmackDown brand again. A draft took place again that year on the October 14th episode of Raw, where Liv Morgan was the final overall pick of the year's draft, Damn. being drafted back to the Raw brand. And a couple months later, vignettes would begin to air, which would see the return of Liv Morgan. And these were the vignettes showing her in the bath and hyping up her return. And she would return on the December 30th episode of Raw during Bobby Lashley and Lana's wedding. Yes, we all remember this. This is when she professed her love for Lana. Liv Morgan would get mixed up in the Lana, Lashley, and Rusev storyline and begin feuding with Lana. Cringe. Or she was in love with Lana, but then they just scrapped the being in love thing. It was just weird. Yeah. 
It was a dreadful storyline that went absolutely nowhere, but Liv Morgan would come out on top on the feud, and she would stride on as a babyface single star on the Raw roster. She was part of the Elimination Chamber match that year, where Shayna Baszler just absolutely squashed everyone in the match, mm -hmm. Liv included. And she was a part of the WrestleMania 36 pre-show, where she defeated Natalia, getting a win at WrestleMania, so pretty big for her. And obviously, this was now the pandemic era of WWE, where it was empty arena, and Raw and SmackDown and all the shows just had a completely different vibe and a lot of people getting pushed more and Liv Morgan was on TV quite often at this point. Her and Ruby Riot would actually reunite on the June 22nd episode of Raw and the Riot Squad was now back and they would be in pursuit of the women's tag team titles. She was drafted back to SmackDown in October 2020 along with Ruby Riot as the Riot Squad. They were a part of the Survivor Series Brand Warfare match which they lost. Mm. And throughout the time that Ruby and Liv were teaming again, they had various shots and chances at the women's tag team championships. They wrestled on night one of WrestleMania 37 in the women's tag team gauntlet match a match that they had a great showing in eliminating two teams and then they ended up losing to natalia and tamina god they should have won that match why did the riot <laughs> squad not win that match ruby riot was suddenly released from the company in the yep. May 2021 budget cut releases and mm -hmm. was out of we so Liv morgan had to become a single star once again but Liv Morgan, for the last couple of years, teaming with Ruby Riot again, had shown so much improvement, and now a singles run felt completely right. A babyface Liv Morgan, everything was in place, and this should be good. She wrestled at the Money in the Bank 2021 pay-per-view in a match I was convinced she was going to win, but unfortunately mm -hmm. didn't, as Nikki A.S.H. won. But Liv Morgan was really showing up as a singles wrestler. You could see the improvement. And then, this is when the fans started getting behind her, especially when Becky was the champ. I remember this. Becky was the champ. She was more of a heel now. People started getting behind Liv. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I was like, okay, people are starting to get behind this. Okay. People are, she she kept getting so close to getting in. I think people love that underdog story. And then he's going to talk about it. Obviously, when she won money in the bank and how it happened and how quick it was. I don't think they really built that crescendo up they just put the title on her cool and then not even that long she lost it you know what i'm saying and now we're supposed to buy into her still and it's like uh i don't know how much i can buy in you know what i'm saying it's y'all kind of put it up there and then put her right back down and how am I supposed to buy into it? So, I don't know. ...in every match, and when she was drafted back to the Raw brand, she started to get a pretty good singles push. She was wrestling with the likes of Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. They had a very good match on the WWE Day 1 pay-per-view in 2022, and she was mixing it up with the likes of Bianca Belair, Dewdrop, and many others on the roster, and she was one of the top dogs for the Raw Women's roster. She competed on Night 2 of WrestleMania 38, teaming up with Rhea Ripley in the Women's Tag Team title 4-Way. The match won by Sasha and Naomi where they held the titles for so long afterwards and had a really long reign. Following Rhea turning oh, heel on Liv Morgan and joining yep. the Judgment Day, Liv Morgan and Rhea would begin feuding and Liv Morgan would also begin teaming up with AJ Styles and Finn Balor to take on the Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. They wrestled at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in a 3v3 mixed tag match won by the Judgment Day. Liv Morgan would be a part of the Money in the Bank Here ladder match at Money in the Bank 2022 which she would win and this was massive and completely deserved something people wanted to see yeah and at that point i was like you know what i'm okay with it i was one of those people was like all right this is good i didn't think she was gonna cash it in that same damn night i don't have a it's like it's cool if you want to get the successful cash in but build up to it i thought she was gonna build up no she boom and I was excited to see her have a long time with the briefcase, you know, tease the cash-ins. But yeah. I wasn't really too unhappy when she would cash in the same night to defeat Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. A crazy moment that, to be honest, came out of nowhere. Out I was nowhere. not expecting her to do it the same night, but it was a great moment. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people like to shit on Liv Morgan's title reign. 
I think she had a great showing as champion. She was on TV every week. She carried the belt like a star. And hey, she had a couple successful defenses. She defeated Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam in a bit of a, a weird match, I will say. A weirdly yeah. booked match. But she defeated Shayna Baszler at Clash of the Castle in a pretty good match, I thought. However, she would lose the title to Ronda Rousey in an Extreme Rules match at Extreme Here's the problem, and I have to address it, is how they booked it. Once again... We're talking about Ronda here. <laughs> We're talking about Shayna here. You got to make me b believe that Liv Morgan, no matter how much she loves wrestling and WWE, you got to make me believe Liv Morgan can competently take these women out. And if you saw the match, she tapped, <laughs> which is why the crowd turned on her. The crowd legitimately turned on her saying, you tapped out. Because she technically did. It, it, the way they booked that was not good. Yes, she got a noticeable win off of Shayna. But it, at the same time, that match was, eh, it was okay. I, it was just, once she had tapped, like once you have your baby, she should have passed out before she tapped out. Whatever the case should have been. You don't have your baby face champ who just won the title tap out. That would have been a cool moment for her. Like, oh, she got some guts. It, she passed out. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. That's how you build character upon this person because you already got to suspend the disbelief that Liv Morgan can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ronda. You got to do that with a lot of people on the roster, but the character the character helps that. And to me, Liv has just come off as this pretty girl that loves wrestling. She has some cool moves here and there, but at the same time, I just don't get, oh, she's about to kick the crap out of you. And that's where things kind of, for me, start to fall off with her because of how they were booking her and her characterization towards, you know, like her character development in these matches and feuds. Rules 2022, ending the reign prematurely at 98 days. But from here, Liv Morgan was absolutely cemented. She was now a main eventer in the women's division. And that can be seen by how she did in the Royal Rumble match in 2023. She starts that at number two alongside Rhea Ripley, who was number one, and them two ended up being the final two Which of is the crazy. Royal Rumble. Liv Morgan obviously did not win, yeah. but what a great showing her and Rhea both had from one and two. And that's more or less where we find ourselves today. Liv Morgan began teaming up with Raquel Rodriguez recently because the WWE Women's Tag Team Division, every team is just a thrown together team, pretty much. And on the 10th of April, 2023 edition of Monday Night Raw, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez defeated Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus to win the women's tag team title mm -hmm. with Liv Morgan pinning Trish Stratus. The first pinfall loss for Trish Stratus in 16 years. The first time she got pinned and it was by Liv Morgan. And now here's the thing. Here's the thing. It is cool where she started from, where she's at now. I will never take that away from her. And if maybe this tag team situation could work out for a while, we'll see. I don't know. It's just the thing about Liv, and I'm going to continue to say this. And, you know, if they can book her strong or you can keep buying into her, cool. I'm all for it. I don't want people to think I just hate Liv to hate Liv. No, that's not what it is. It's just a lot of the matches that I've seen, I was like, oh, well, she's losing this match, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like off rip, I'm automatically thinking, well, she's not about to win this. You know, I don't I don't see her winning this match. You know, like it that's just my personal opinion. It's how they booked her. And uh it is crazy how over she has gotten and she deserves the accolades that she has been, you know, been out, you know, been given. We're not even given, she's earned it. So I will never take that away from her. It's just me personally. When I think about her in the tier of all these women wrestlers that WWE has on the main roster. I'm gonna be honest with you. She's not at the top. She's like in the middle right now. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. It just depends on how they continue to book her. So I know there's a lot of Lil Morgan fans out there. Please don't hate me. I'm just giving my opinion. I think she's cool. And we will see what they do with the tag team uh, championships. Not sure what they're gonna do with them. Hopefully they, they get some good use out of them. Maybe get some more great matches from them or whatnot. And we see where it goes. But comment down below. Let me know, man. 
how much of a fan of you guys or some of you guys of Liv Morgan? Are you guys big fans of her? Are you guys indifferent or do you guys not care for her character or gimmick? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K and I am still here on the Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.